Good afternoon. How are you? Thank you for coming. I'm Donna Caton Behensky, and I'm the president and CEO of the University of Wisconsin Hospital and Clinics. And I'm honored to have you all here, but more importantly, to have uh, our governor here with us today, honoring uh, some of our programs, but to make some very important announcements. He just completed a visit of some of our students involved in the project search at UW Hospital. We're very proud of that program and have individuals here who represent them. So if there are questions afterwards, we'd be happy to answer. It was great to see these young adults achieving some really significant things that are needed here. This was not a gimme kind of program. It is a real program for real students and real people who want to earn their living uh, by helping us right here in the hospital. So I would now like to introduce Governor Scott Walker, who is here to share a few words with you about some grants that we have received here in the state. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Well, uh, good afternoon as well. It is good to be with you. And uh, we just did a, a tour along the way uh, where we saw through, uh, uh, through this program we're gonna be talking about uh, firsthand the benefits of uh, hiring young people uh, with uh, developmental disabilities uh, to be in roles uh, that not only uh, help uh, the employer, in this case, University of Wisconsin uh, Health System, uh, looking at the hospital and clinics here, but also provide long-term opportunities for employment in the future. And it was interesting uh, knowing of the program, but, but seeing it firsthand, uh, whether it was a young woman early on when we came in and we saw the equipment uh, that a whole group, not just this young woman, but a whole group of individuals involving making sure that all the equipment that comes in and out uh, is sterilized and uh, is appropriate for use in various capacities capacity throughout the hospital. She in particular was working on putting together respiratory equipment, a very important uh, role. One I just uh, have seen on a, a, f a distant family member recently uh, elsewhere in the state, but having uh, seen the respiratory equipment needed, knowing how important it is to have that available and to have it sterile and have it be effective. Uh, looking at another part with uh, someone who's helping manage and keep control of, of the uh, um, sterile clothing that's used and then another area looking at someone stacking some of the equipment and keeping track of that and even a young man at the end who's just about a few months away from uh, being 21 uh, who was excited and thrilled about the work that he's doing. W what we saw though in the tour and, and we're going to talk about highlighting uh, two particular, uh, particular grants that the state of Wisconsin has given but particularly uh, the one we want to highlight the most. What we saw here today uh, was young people who weren't just excited about coming to a job, uh, but were performing a job that not only gave them skills, but performed great value to the employer. Um, and uh, as was repeated to me time and time again, uh, these are important jobs. These are jobs uh, that, uh, that, again, provide value that need to be done uh, by the hospital and that have it. The key link, though, uh, is having great partners and having great folks from the school system uh, who make sure that they uh, come in early and understand what the jobs are. Um, make sure the young people uh, are part of uh, getting the skills to do that and then gradually back off and let them do the jobs themselves. And, and that just really was uh, inspirational. So uh, I, first off, I want to say thanks for allowing us to come through. Uh, as I understand right now, in terms of students involved here in the Madison area through the school system, uh, there's right now eight students at this hospital, about a dozen over at the VA. In total, in the past year, there's been about 23. Uh, these two sites are two of the six around the state uh, that are part of this program, Project Search, uh, whether it's the two here in Madison, looking throughout the state the Royal Sinai in the Milwaukee area at Children's Hospital in Wauwatosa just down the way from my house or looking up in Menominee in the Northwest at in that case actually at a Walmart distribution center uh, in each case you've got a unique opportunity um, to uh, to work with individuals uh, in uh, the school system plug them in uh, to a work environment because we know uh, through the work that we've done through the I should say we others have done I, I just get to announce things like this but folks uh, in other state agencies along with our partners uh, throughout the state uh, we know that the evidence shows uh, that uh, young people uh, with disabilities in particular who get work opportunities early on uh, and get p plugged in either into employment and a couple, as I understand, a couple of students here have been hired even in the last two years or so that the program's been here, have been hired right at the hospital. Others are getting the skills needed whether it's here or anywhere else. Uh, but we know uh, if a young person uh, in their school years gets that opportunity, gets that uh, training, and then plugs in a job, uh, they're going to be in good position in the future. 
Uh, today, what we wanted to highlight again are two grants, but the biggest one is, uh, and I get the, the name right, the Let's Get to Work uh, is a grant given to the uh, board uh, for people with disabilities here in the state of Wisconsin. It'll involve three state agencies. Uh, the Department of Health Services and Secretary Dennis Smith is here with us. Uh, be one of the primary ones, the Department of Public Instruction uh, through the leadership of Dr. Tony Evers. And in the Department of Workforce Development, the, the Division of uh, uh, Vocational Rehabilitation, those three state agencies working together along with our partners uh, in terms of Disability Rights Wisconsin and certainly the University uh, Center for Excellence for People with Disability, Developmental Disabilities, uh, that helps us with this. This grant is a federal grant uh, awarded to the board uh, for five years. Uh, it's for $1.82 million. Uh, it is interesting to know that the grant is, uh, this state is just one of six states in the country who will be receiving this multi-year grant. And the idea fits in perfectly uh, with Project, Project Search because the concept is uh, to help young people uh, with disabilities be tied into where uh, job skills and opportunities are made available with the idea, the goal being long term, uh, of, of being a, a placement within the community in jobs that are both fulfilling uh, to the individual uh, as they are rewarding uh, and appreciated by the employer. Uh, it's interesting because this also fits in, I, I, uh, in one of the notes they passed on to me, one of, actually one of the board members uh, for people with disabilities here in Wisconsin, um, board member Patrick Young is a good example of this, uh, 22, uh, got uh, six years ago in high school, got an opportunity to work part-time at Tailored Packaging Company in Waukesha. Uh, actually met, uh, as I understand it from the information I was given, Patrick met his employer uh, when they were involved in an interfaith activity. Uh, Patrick uh, has Down syndrome and uh, uh, not only got a chance to get employed uh, through a similar type program, uh, but now six years later has gotten four pay raises, uh, makes enough now that doesn't, he doesn't receive uh, any direct assistance to Social Security um, and um, actually is not only the fastest in his particular area, uh, but as I understand, has been tr cross trained in other areas to take the place when others of his coworkers and colleagues are on vacation or missing time or things of that nature. So I think that's a great example of whether it's here, whether it's with Patrick and Waukesha or other sites, hopefully uh, more than just the handful that we have now. Uh, again, with the right connection and hopefully with this grant, we can help more employers across the state understand uh, that applying this in the school system in a way that fits the, the right interest, because that's the other thing I, I picked up on was uh, in this tour in particular, it takes good people uh, on the staff identifying who are the right prospects so that you get someone who's got the right interest, the right skill set, uh, the right passion for that particular job, and then matching them uh, with that job uh, that makes for success. So uh, we were thrilled to be able to highlight that today. The other grant that, that we wanted to add in at the same time, it's not directly linked, although it's similar, um, and both are appropriate uh, because October uh, is National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Um, so we've declared that here in Wisconsin, of course, across the country. Uh, but the other part is the uh, the other grant that the Department of Health Services here in the state received uh, is the Real Choice System Change uh, grant from the federal government through CMS. And it's actually a great one where Dennis's shop is going to uh, partner with WIDA, the Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Authority. It's a, a grant of $330,000 that's tied up uh, directly into having DHS and WIDA work together on new supportive housing units uh, for Medicaid eligible individuals with disabilities. So the idea being, again, we think it fits in well, get employment and then make sure there are housing opportunities available for those that uh, have employment opportunities uh, that give them the freedom and independence that they need and then make sure that there are affordable opportunities for them uh, to move into the community uh, one spot or another. So uh, these are all good news things. We wanted to highlight them, highlight the good work, not only take the tour, uh, but then draw attention to that, particularly since, again, October is a month where we're trying to draw attention uh, to uh, employment opportunities, particularly for young people with disabilities. Uh, with that, uh, we'll take uh, questions. Uh, you know, we've got some folks in the media here, questions on that uh, initially, and then if you've got questions on other things as usual, I'll take those as well. Can you explain how this grant would work? Um, you said it, the grant's to help um, 
people with disabilities get jobs. So does the grant go to organizations to help place people? Does it help the employer offset costs? How does it work? Yeah, it'll be worked through a number of agencies. I'm going to have Secretary Smith talk a little bit about DHS, DHS's role. But it, it, it really is a collaborative because you've got the Department of Health Services um, working really most directly with the board for people with uh, disabilities here in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, but then DPI and really the schools, as we see on this uh, project right here in Madison when it comes to Project Search. Uh, and then you also have got the division uh, uh, through workforce development that deals directly uh, with job placement as well. So really you've got a number of different entities. But Secretary Smith, I don't know if there's more you want to add to that as well. Just to add again, getting state agencies working together under the same mission, uh, a lot of it is just going to be uh, to support our efforts working together to identify opportunities uh, in the community uh, and connect people with those uh, opportunities. Uh, this is uh, people, people with disabilities, if you ask them what they want, uh, top of the list is a job. And uh, working together, we're going to help them to achieve their goals. And the other part, too, is I mentioned with Project Search, you've got this is one of six sites in the state. I think part of the grant, the hope would be that this would help us reach out and get more employers involved in similar programs across the state of Wisconsin. We also wanted to ask you about. Uh, as long as That's you're right. Here, I'm uh, used to it. <laughs> um, it you, uh, DOA sent out a note of notification to state agencies about additional cuts they mm -hmm. would have to make based on lapses. Can you explain why, first of all, those cuts are necessary, and second of all, why the UW system is bearing the brunt of those plans? Sure. Uh, well, first off, the lapses uh, were in the budget, just like they were two years ago under my predecessor. Um, so those aren't a surprise. Uh, those following the budget understood that. What we did, though, is we took a couple key areas, and actually one ties into what we're talking about here today. We exempted Medicaid. Um, so we added $1.2 billion for Medicaid-related programs to help uh, people with disabilities, to help older adults in long-term care, to help needy families and children. We added that in the budget. We didn't think, even though there are lapses across the board, uh, to meet the budget goals, again, as there were in the past. Uh, the, we, we didn't think at a time as we have a, a growing need in that area. That, for us, was a priority, so we exempted uh, Medicaid. We also exempted school aides, uh, because while we gave local governments and school districts the reforms they needed to balance the budgets uh, uh, this school year and into the next school year over the budget time, we thought adding on to that uh, wasn't able to offset that. Overall, it, it, and then we applied, um, those, there are a few other smaller uh, exemptions, for example, in uh, public defenders and in district attorney's offices. Again, you shut down those systems if you don't have those. Uh, but everywhere else in state government, we applied that. So the university system has one of the largest budgets, and so in turn, uh, it parallels uh, with the laps that they have. But again, it's not something that was different than what was in the budget. But overall, they're spending something like of the, of the budget and they're taking 38% of this cost. It is, but the difference is, remember, other, compared to other state agencies, um, the state support for the UW is a very small percentage of their overall budget. Um, so as a total of their budget, it's a much smaller percentage than other state agencies. Many of the other state agencies, that's all they get uh, is state general purpose revenue. In the case of the university system, the state support is a portion of it, tuition, grants, programs, other funding, program revenue, all of those are much bigger pieces than just direct state aid. The special session that you have going on now deals with a number of job tax credits mm -hmm. um, for businesses. Do you feel at all like there's a disconnect with offering tax credits and maybe taking some revenues away from the state at the same time you're asking state agencies to cut more from their budgets? Well, again, in those areas, our number one focus in the end, we're much better off looking ahead a year, two years from now, uh, we'll be better overall if there's more people working in this state. And so everything we're trying to do is focused on how do we get more people working. You know, the unemployment rate went down a tenth of a percent this past month, but the job numbers are still challenging because of what we see in Washington. Now, the last couple months, because of the debt debate, has been a real wet blanket on the national economy, and we haven't been immune from that in Wisconsin, and we need to find ways to break through that. So our focus is on on things that are directly linked to job creation. Now, there may need to be some tweaking. Uh, for example, uh, 
even one of the bills we, we put on the list from a Democrat, Representative Barca, the minority leader in the state assembly, has a bill that, that would make angel tax uh, credit investments uh, refundable. Um, that's going to cost some money out there. We have to decide whether or not the benefit of whatever may come from that in terms of more jobs, whether it's here at the Research Park at the University of Wisconsin or other places, uh, long term makes up for that. And those are things the legislature will have to look at. So how many bills do you think that you may have to reconsider here? Well, you got 26 bills in total. About a third were authored by Democrats, about a third by Republicans, and a third were new ideas out there. Uh, you've got maybe eight to ten that have some fiscal impact. I think along the way, what you'll probably see is, in, in light of these updated numbers, working with the legislature, it might be the bill still passed, but they might have a revised uh, component as to how much uh, of a credit's available. Um, in some cases, some of these are the credit themselves, but in many cases, it's just sending a clear message to job creators, be it a small business that needs startup equity, or be it a mid-sized employer that's looking to grow. Some of it's just knowing that there's help along the way and that there's an interest in helping them employ more people. It's not the size as much as it is the interest. Thank you. One more. If anybody has them. Thank you. Thank everybody for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you.